And now it's time for today's daily forecast with EPAWA meteorologist Bobby Martridge. And good morning to you. It is the weekend, and this weekend forecast video is for September 8th and 9th, 2018. Uh, we've got a lot to cover in this video. We're going to go a little bit more detailed in the, into the hurricane part of it because we won't be doing another update with the daily forecast video until Sunday night for Monday. And uh, by that time, we should have a little bit better handle on things. But up until then, uh, over the next couple of days, we're going to have to uh, just monitor the model guidance and uh, see where it's trending and compare that to observations. And uh, there's a couple of benchmarks I'm going to go over here in this video and what we're going to be looking for over the weekend with regard to Florence and the eventuality of that system and whether or not it affects the east coast i will say the threat along the eastern seaboard here is uh, definitely increasing all right it's not quite likely yet but uh, it's still still five six days away before we start seeing those impacts reach the uh, eastern seaboard or at least near it uh, so we'll have to start paying close attention this weekend but i think once we get to monday we'll have a few check marks on the list of things that we're looking for over the weekend and seeing where it is and what it's doing uh, so that we can kind of properly gauge what's going to happen a little bit better next week because we're looking at the end of next week already as a time frame uh, for this to occur. If it does hit the United States, it's going to be probably Thursday. So we're going to be watching for that uh, very closely. But there, here's the map for today. This is looking at a frontal boundary stalled south of the region. This is the is sitting right down here just south of Delmarva. And uh, there could be a few scattered showers mainly early on and it's going to be across our southern zones it looks like there's high pressure off to the north way up here uh, but it's going to be pushing down south a little bit so it's going to start pushing this frontal boundary south just enough that you might get uh, at least in the northern half of our coverage area today start uh, so you start off with cloudy skies in the morning probably no showers up here uh, so the areas we're looking at for showers our shower potential is going to be like right here all right and that's just for the mainly the morning and then it continues the southern half of that circle there. Uh, still the threat continues into the afternoon. But the northern half of that circle, these areas up here, is probably just the morning. And then you go to mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon. But areas further north, you're going to see the sun come out this afternoon, I think. And um, you'll have at least peaks of sun this afternoon once you have those morning clouds go away. So high pressure building in from the north will start to dry us out. So it's going to be a tale of two... Uh, two different scenes today across our region. Northern areas will be have, have a little bit of sun, won't be that bad of a day at all. And further south, it'll have uh, you'll have the clouds and the risk for some showers. And that's going to continue uh, during the uh, day and the overnight period. Then that front's going to return northward as the warm front. And that's because we have what the, what was once Gordon, tropical storm Gordon, that's going to take this frontal boundary and lift it off to the north and east. And that's going to come in here on Sunday. I think Sunday's going to start off with scattered showers in the morning. And as this continues off to the north, you're going to get a more of a steady rain in the afternoon. You can see that here. Uh, just started to bring steady rain along that warm front throughout the day here on Sunday. So Sunday doesn't look too good right now. Sunday does not look too good across anywhere in our region. It looks like just showers are going to evolve into more steady rain as this system continues off to the north and east. The heaviest rain, though, with this is going to be with the system itself as it traverses the Ohio Valley and goes up through the eastern Great Lakes. So your heaviest rain is going to be up in northwestern Pennsylvania, it looks like, and into southwestern New York. And that's going to continue off to the north and east. Once this gets up uh, further, the front goes further north, uh, we're going to have rain continuing into Sunday night. Once we get into Monday, it looks like we start off dry. We could have some scattered showers and thunderstorms moving through with the trailing cold front, uh, which actually isn't going to move in until Tuesday. Uh, could have some scattered late day thunderstorms with this on Tuesday as well. So chance for scattered thunderstorms on Monday and Tuesday. And uh, then, then after that, the front should move through the region. Okay, and then we get to uh, Wednesday. Uh, GFS is what I'm showing right here. And uh, showing the scattered activity here on one Wednesday as well. I don't think, I think you get a break here in the middle of the week. Uh, most of Tuesday and Wednesday look like they're going to be dry days. Uh, Tuesday, just an isolated thunderstorm. And then Wednesday, you're going to have probably just partly cloudy skies. I'm not buying this what it's showing here there's really no frontal boundary in the vicinity anymore so there's no reason for this to be here and uh you know so we're looking at a partly cloudy day is what we're going with which is more in line with the european guidance for uh, for wednesday so it looks like we do have a little bit of a drier period mixed in there once that front passes on tuesday uh dry wednesday and then we get to thursday and we start paying attention more to the tropics here is the gfs projection of what hurricane florence will do and it's coming right into uh, so the eastern parts of North Carolina, this is like near Cape Lookout, uh, near the outer banks of, of uh, North Carolina, somewhere in that vicinity, this is where it has it. Uh, European models further south into South Carolina near Myrtle Beach or thereabout. 
Uh, so, you know, there's a couple different solutions showing different areas getting hit with this uh, with this system. But that's not really important right now. We're just trying to, uh, we do think, again, it's in the threats increasing along somewhere, anywhere from Jacksonville, Florida, all the way up to probably Long Island has to keep a close eye on this because it's going to be a very, um, you know, there's a very wide variance of where this could hit. Uh, if you want to go in the middle of the cone there and say, okay, well, maybe this is, you know, North Carolina is in the middle. Okay, whatever. Uh, if you want to think it's going to hit there, that's great. But either way, uh, that's not really really important for this area. We are going to have what looks like, after this makes landfall, it will weaken because it's going over land, of course. And then uh, the GFS takes this up here to our region as remnant heavy rain and wind. But the wind associated with this is tropical storm force gusts at this point. So we're not looking at another repeat of Sandy or anything like that. If this were to take this path through North Carolina, you would have some weakening as it crossed over North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland. By the time it gets up here, uh, it's in a weakened state, but still producing a very heavy rain. And so we're going to have to watch for what it does after landfall, even if it doesn't affect us directly. Uh, some earlier model runs earlier in the week were showing, some, showing the system coming up through the Chesapeake or maybe coming up here like this across uh, near Ocean City, Maryland, and uh, right along the New Jersey coast and doing one of these numbers here. A lot of different solutions still still on the table, and that is these, these two are both are two of the solutions that are possible. So I don't want to eliminate either one of those, of course, but uh, either way, we have to watch for what it does after landfall too for how it would affect this area. And we're still a long ways out uh, to figure out what this is going to do. This would be the Friday, Saturday time frame where we would get any kind of remnants from this. So here's what we're looking at right now. This is the uh, this is the infrared loop of the Atlantic, and this is a live loop here. Uh, Florence is sitting right out here. Uh, down to your southwest here is a uh, newly named Tropical Depression number nine. There's also another one further off to the east that is out of the picture that's closest uh, near the uh, Cape Verde Islands off of uh, the coast of Africa. And uh, that looks that one is uh, looks like it's going to be harmless. This one down here uh, looks is uh, projected to continue, just continue westward. It may even uh, get into a hurricane status as it threatens the uh, Le Leeward Islands eventually. Uh, but there's no immediate concern to the United States from that. Uh, system in particular. The one we're worrying about, of course, is Florence, which is sitting right out here. Uh, there's another interesting development that's sitting right up here. This this mess up here, this whole cluster of of uh, convection, this is all in association with the low center, which is right about here. And uh, this is actually Invest 94L. Okay, the National Weather or National Hurricane Center has designated this area as an area to watch for possible development. But the only thing is uh, with this system. Uh, it should get out of the way because you have the trough that's sitting off to the north here. Here's your here's your trough. This is the one that's uh, going to be digging into the uh, uh, in the North Atlantic, and there was some speculation that maybe Florence out here would be picked up by this trough and curve out the sea like this and follow it. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to happen now. The window is just about closed, but this system is weak enough where it can be more and closer to that trough where it is more easily uh, influenced by it, and it should. Be picked up by this trough and get out of the way. So I don't think it's going to be affected, affecting uh, Florence eventually. I think if, uh, Florence just continues off in this manner like this, kind of on a westward, maybe west-northwestern path eventually, and then at some point it's going to turn off to the north, and where that is, whether it's North Carolina, whether it comes here to South Carolina, or to the down further south than that, or it comes up along the coast. I mean, these are all possibilities of what it can do once it gets out of this range. So we're pretty consistent that it's going to continue up in this direction out here and there are, all the models are pretty pretty honed in on that idea that it'll be out um you know south of bermuda certainly but uh you know after that point it's a little crazy where you know what what, what you know where it's going to go so we're looking at some benchmarks this weekend and one of those is the intensity of this we're getting some wind shear coming into this right now and you can't really see it here on this image but there's uh some wind shear coming around uh on this side of of uh of florence right now that is keeping it on the weaker side took it down to a tropical storm but it is expected to over the weekend intense re-intensify back into a hurricane and then once it, once it gets out uh over in this vicinity right here once this gets out of the way once it gets in this vicinity right here we could have a major hurricane once again as it heads as it approaches the coastline of the uh, of the east coast and one of the reasons why we think it's going to happen is uh, we already passed the first benchmark is that trough going to pick it up uh, very doubtful, very doubtful. It looks like it's going to be too fast and getting out of the way too quickly, not digging enough in order to get it, and it's too far south. There's too much separation between that trough and this system right here. There's too much too much real estate here. Uh, now, this is still way out here in the Atlantic. If you get the distance, the same distance between uh, any landfall point in the United States, the closest point over to Florence is the same distance from going from, say, Charlotte, North Carolina, 
to Denver, Colorado. It's a, that's a long distance, folks. So we got plenty of time here. This is now, uh, this is, and we're not talking about landfall possibilities until about next Thursday. So we've got a while to go yet. Same thing with this system out here. It's going to take five days to get all the way over to uh, where it's nearing the, the uh, Leeward Islands. So we're not worried about it we're in, like immediately over the weekend. This is why we don't have to worry about just anything this weekend and updating anything this weekend because it's not going to be until Monday when we can see it out here uh, and see what it's doing. It should be a hurricane by then. It should be intensifying. We can see this system getting out of the way by that point, and uh, we should have a lot better idea where it's going to go. Uh, where it's going to threaten the eastern east coast of the United States. And the reason it does that is because of the strong ridge that's out here that will guide it. It's going to build in over the top, and once that trough exits in the North Atlantic, steering flow around high pressures like this. So the idea here is it continues up here in this direction, somewhere in that vicinity there. Uh, we just don't know exactly where that's going to be. It could end up being a little bit further southwest. It could end up coming up here, just grazing the coastline like this and battering the coasts. We've, we've seen that happen too. A lot of different possibilities, but there's a, uh, most of these uh, scenarios do involve at least some remnant rainfall making up further north, and that could get to our region. So we have to watch for that after landfall. Uh, the model spaghetti plot, you're probably seeing these that are running around a lot. Uh, most of these are taking this into the southeastern U.S. coastline, anywhere from, uh, again, South Carolina all the way up to uh, about Ocean City or Chesapeake Bay area. Uh, so either way, it looks like it was going to can be coming up like this at this point where we're watching for this area right here, which is our coverage area. Uh, it might not take a direct hit, but you could still have a formidable tropical storm force winds type producing system with heavy rain as remnants. Of course, we don't need heavy rain. We have plenty of that this summer. So we're going to be monitoring this closely, but there's nothing really we can do until Monday when we see those benchmarks. Once we see this system uh, more out here, as opposed to being all the way back here. I mean, that's a lot closer. And uh, you see what happens when you're in the short term here. Uh, the models are pretty pretty consistent where it's going to be. They're really in agreement here. And since when it gets out here, this kind of spreads apart. So this cone of uncertainty spreads here. So it's more like this. You're, you're pretty close here, and then it starts spreading out. See, like that? So if you, you know, the closer you are to the system, if it's out here on Monday, uh, that cone is going to be a lot tighter. And then we'll have a smaller window. We'll have a better idea of where it's going to hit or if it hits at all. It may miss entirely. Okay, it's still a chance for this thing to curve out the sea like this. Uh, would still pro pro provide a lot of uh, rip currents and rough surf and storm surge and things like that along the coast. But a lot better of a scenario than dealing with heavy rain and wind that you'd be dealing with even with a remnant system. So we're going to be watching this closely over the weekend and, of course, all of next week. Uh, we're not going to, we're going to hold off on any public statements and alarms alarms being sounded or anything like that until we get into next week we have a little bit more confidence and certainty where this is going because as you can see there's a big difference between uh you know some something hitting ocean city maryland versus southwest of myrtle beach i mean that's one hell of a distance there between the two and uh the, the landfall point is not quite as important as what it does after a landfall for our area so we're going to be monitoring that closely through this weekend and through uh, next week. Continue to follow the videos. We'll have another video update for Sunday night for Monday morning, and we'll give you the latest information at that time. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for September 8th and 9th, 2018. Have a great weekend.